Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, continuing talking about theory of probabilities, uh, I would like to present a couple of more examples of uh, probabilistic problems. Um, everything uh, which is um, uh, on this lecture is just part of the whole course of advanced mathematics presented on unizor.com. Um, every lecture has notes, uh, many problems are presented over there, and for registered students uh, there are exams which you can take, everything is free. So I do suggest you to, to go to the website and maybe start with reading the notes which are presenting these problems I'm going to discuss. Try to solve them yourselves. That's very, very important. Um, to Even if you don't solve it, at least think about how to solve these problems. And then listen to the lecture. Um, after which I suggest you to do again, just go through the notes, read the problems, and try again to recreate the solution on your own. All right, so let's go to this particular lecture. Uh, and um, we are talking about lottery. I have uh, three different problems related to the lottery. Um, and again, this is just an example of how the probability can be used. I'm not going to go into all the intricacies of all the different lottery games, etc. I will consider only one game, uh, which is probably one of the first ones. And uh, the rules are um, there is a random drawing of six numbers out of 49. So out of these 49, six are winning. So there is some kind of a public uh, process, public event, when these six numbers are chosen from 49, like balls or whatever, and they're picked from from the set of all the balls from 1 to 49 using some kind of a machine or whatever. So this is the random drawing. Now before that, people who would like to participate in the game, they are purchasing tickets where they have 49 different numbers and they mark six numbers the way how they want to. After which, uh, when the drawing is done, they check uh, if the numbers they choose correspond to the number which were um, drawn by, by this machine, by the drawing machine. And depending on the number of, uh, of the numbers which are the same on the ticket and among these six winning numbers, uh, well, there is a, a certain amount of um, sum which you can win. And, uh, well, if you don't uh, get uh, two or more numbers properly guessed, so if it's zero or one, you, you lose. You lose your initial investment into the ticket. So the cost of ticket is completely lost. Starting from two winning numbers, which you have properly guessed out of these six, the ticket is considered as a winning ticket and the price depends on how many numbers, two or above, um, are properly guessed. Okay, so my problem right now is, what's the probability of um, winning k, uh, of guessing k winning numbers. So again, you buy a ticket on one ticket, we're talking about one ticket right now, so you buy a ticket, you mark six numbers, uh, later on there is a drawing which basically draws six numbers using this machine, whatever, and then the probability of k numbers out of whatever six you have marked on your ticket to correspond to the winning numbers picked by the machine. All right. Um, first of all, when we are talking about probabilities, we have to talk about two different things which are very important, which is um, sample space which is all the elementary events which might happen. And then we have to talk about events or event or events which we are interested in. So this is all elementary events and this is only certain elementary events. 
which satisfies certain condition which we are looking for. And after that, the ratio between this and this, so if you will divide this by this, you will get the probability. That's basically a definition of probability based on the frequency theory, which we addressed before. All right, so what are our all elementary events and what are events we are interested in? So let's consider the chronological order. First, you buy a ticket and you mark six numbers. That process actually fixes the six numbers. You have basically say, okay, this, 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 these are my uh, predictions and they are fixed at the moment when the drawing really occurs. When the drawing occurs, there can be this outcome or that outcome, basically any combination of six numbers out of 49 can be the winning combination of numbers, right? So we have as many elementary events, as many different combinations of six numbers out of 49 we can draw from this, from this machine, which is obviously number of uh, combinations from 49 by 6. So this is the total number of elementary events, where elementary event is a particular set of six numbers chosen by the drawing uh, process. Each of these is exactly the same as far as its chances as any other. So if there are so many elementary events, we are assuming that they're all equally chanced, so they all have exactly the same probability, and since the total probability is equal to 1, the total of probability of some number coming up, uh, some set of six numbers coming up. Obviously, the sum of these should be equal to uh, 1, which means that the probability of one single event, elementary event, is equal to 1 over number of uh, combinations from 49 by 6. So, this defines our, our sample space and all elementary events are defined this way and we have a probability of each elementary event. Now, uh, we have to consider what events actually correspond to whatever our interest is. Our interest is k elements uh, k numbers um, should correspond between whatever has been drawn and whatever we have fixed before this drawing by marking certain numbers on the ticket. All right? Okay, how can we calculate that? Um, marking six numbers on the ticket actually breaks the all 49 different numbers into two groups. Group number one our six numbers which we marked on the ticket and group two all others all other numbers so there are six numbers here and 43 numbers in, this sec in the second group. So we have marked six numbers and, the, and these numbers correspond to the group. They form the group one and the other 43 numbers which we did not mark are in the group two. Now, what actually is the event of having exactly k numbers properly guessed? It means that for elementary event, as we know it, we have chosen one elementary event, a set of six numbers uh, picked by the drawing machine. Out of these six, k is supposed to be from group one. These are the numbers we marked in the ticket. And other, so it should be k from group one, and other six minus k should be from the group two. So all we have to do right now is basically count how many different combinations we can make, uh, we can pick six numbers in such a way that k out of these six will belong to this group 
and other 6 minus k belong to this group. And this is obviously the So, how many different combinations from 6 by k? This how many? This many, all right? So, from this group of six numbers which, which we have marked, k must be among winning. So, basically, the number of the elementary events, number of sets of six numbers, um, which have this property is this one. And with each of these, we can have this many events uh, which have the other 6 minus k uh, winning numbers picked from the group which we have not marked. So basically the combination of, of these, which is a product actually, because for each of these we can have all of these, this is the number of different elementary events, different sets of 6 numbers, which basically comprise our event we are interested in when k numbers are among 6 in the group 1 and 6 minus k in the group of uh, not marked. And obviously since we know the number of events which we are interested in, it's this number, and we know the, all, the, the, the number of all elementary events which we have just talked about, we have to divide the number of events we are interested in by the number of total events. Um, actually, sometimes it's presented as division of number of, well, good events or events we are interested in, elementary events, divided by the total number, or, which is equivalent, we can say that this is the number of events which we are interested in multiplied by the probability of each event, which is exactly the same thing. Since, the prob since all events are equally probable, all elementary events are equally probable, and this is the probability, so multiplying by the probability is exactly the same as divided by the number of events. And this is the answer. But now, let me approach this problem slightly differently. It's like a second solution, which is completely equivalent to this one. Now, instead of buying a ticket, marking the ticket with six different numbers, waiting for uh, drawing of the numbers, which is a public event, actually, it's usually on the TV or something like this. Um, let's reverse the sequence of events. First, we draw six numbers uh, from this drawing machine, whatever, but keep it secret from this particular guy who is buying a ticket. Then he bought a ticket, and then he marked this ticket as whatever six numbers he has chosen, and then we checked which numbers are the same and which ones are different. Now, what's the difference, actually? Well, on one hand, there is absolutely no difference, because instead of having uh, the ticket as, as the first primary chronological event, which fixes six numbers, and then considering the results of the drawing as elementary event, we can actually do a completely reverse logic. We can say that, okay, we have drawn six numbers from this, you know, using this drawing machine, fixed these numbers, we just don't tell this to the guy. And the guy bought tickets, and he randomly, uh, random, randomly filled uh, the six numbers uh, marked in this ticket, and then we compare. There is absolutely no logical difference among these two things. But in the first case, we consider the ticket as fixed, and the drawing as, random, uh, uh, as a random event. In the second approach, we consider the drawing as fixing six numbers and then filling the ticket as, as a random event, basically. And the result will be also, uh, uh, result will be the same, absolutely, because there is no difference between these things. This is the picking of six numbers out of 49, and this is picking of six numbers of, uh, of 49. In this case, we are interested in k numbers being from group 1 and others 6 minus k from group 2, and in that case. So, it's basically exactly the same thing. Why did I mention this second approach? 
because in another problem it will be actually used and it will be simpler to use that approach. Actually there is a third approach. Let's consider an elementary event as picking both six numbers in the drawing machine and six numbers in the, uh, in the ticket. In which case the number of different combinations would be this square because I will, have, I will have that many different outcomes from the drawing and that many outcomes of the uh, marking uh, six numbers on the ticket. But again, you can consider it this way, so that would expand the number of elementary events, but it will also expand the number of events when the numbers, uh, k numbers, coincide with each other. And you will get exactly the same answer. So, my point is that there are many approaches you can use to pick one or another um, uh, sample space, set of elementary events. And whatever, now, whatever way you choose should really be, I mean, if it's all correct ways, of course, you should really get the same results. All right, so let's go to the second problem. Second problem is just slightly more difficult, and it's uh, about two tickets. Let's say you bought two tickets, but you fill them um, in, in such a way that there are no um, equal numbers which you are filling these tickets. So it's 12 different numbers on on two tickets. Six numbers on one, six numbers on another, and they don't coincide with, with, with each other. And our, um, our purpose is, um, okay, our purpose is to find the probability of losing both tickets. Now, what does it mean to lose both tickets? It means that one ticket should have zero or one, no more than one, uh, uh, numbers which are corresponding to the winning six numbers. And the second ticket is supposed to have zero or one, no more than one, numbers corresponding to the winning tickets. Okay, and we need the probability of this. Um, the way how I suggest to approach this problem is the following. Now, again, we consider our uh, tickets to be uh, primary, so to speak, and uh, picking two tickets and marking these uh, tickets with six numbers each basically um, makes certain uh, division of uh, all 49 numbers into, in this case, three groups, right? Group number one is group number one. Six numbers from first ticket. Group number two, six numbers from second ticket. And group number three, uh, 37 numbers not marked on either ticket, right? So 6, 6, and 37. Now, what kind of events we actually should consider when both tickets are losing? Well, here are event. Event which I um, mark this way. Event 0, 0, 6. It means that out from the six winning numbers drawn from the, from the machine, winning machine, we have zero numbers in the first group, zero numbers in the second group, and all six are other numbers, which means all six winning numbers, belong to the group which we uh, did not mark at all. Another combination is when you have zero um, numbers, winning numbers, from the first group, from the first ticket, one number from the second, and five numbers, it should be six altogether, right? So one from this group and five from this group. It means that the second ticket has only one number corresponding to the winning, and this one has none. Now, another is 
one zero five, which means that the first group, the first ticket, has one winning number, properly guessed. This one, the second ticket, has zero, and all other five winning numbers from this group. And finally, one one four. When you have one number won by this, one number won for this ticket, and other four winning numbers belong to this group. So these are four events, and there are no more other events. So uh, any other event means that I have two or more winning numbers in one of these groups, and that means that the, that the corresponding ticket would win something, and we are not uh, looking for this. So only these four events we have to really count and all we need to do is the probability of each of them, right? So the probability can be counted as obviously as number of events which number of elementary events which fall into this event category. Alright, and this is what? If I have zero from the first group, number of combinations is C six zero. Number of um, combinations from six by zero times from 6 by 0 for the second group and times from 37 by 6 for the third group. Now this one has 0 from 6 by 0 for the first group, from 6 by 1 for the second group and for 37 by 5 for the second. Now this has exactly the same thing, just change the places. And the last one, I can pick a uh, number of, cars, number of uh, combinations from 6 by 1. One winning number from this, one winning number from this, and four winning numbers from this. So these are number of combinations um, of elementary events which make up this, 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 or this event. So if we add them up, and divide by the total number of uh, different combinations of uh, elementary events, different elementary events, this is our sample space size, um, you will get the probability of this. And uh, it's basically the following. So this can be simplified. This one is 1, 1, and this is C37 by 6. This is 1, this is 6, so it's 6, 37 by 5. This is also 6, uh, 37 by 5. And this is 6 times 6, 36, 37 by 4. So sum of these divided by the total number of combinations I have counted is 0 0.71. So 0 0.71 is a probability of losing two tickets if you fill them up with all different numbers. End of story. And the third problem is somewhat similar to the first one, but just a little bit more complicated. Uh, you have uh, also, you have certain number of tickets which you buy. Now, there is no restriction on how you fill them up. You completely randomly fill them up, each one of those end tickets, okay? End tickets. And we are also looking about, uh, looking for losing these tickets. So obviously, the probability of losing all the tickets is diminishing as the number n grows, because you're increasing your chances to win something, right? So my question is, um, what's the minimum number of tickets which you have to buy to reduce your probability below 50%, below 0 0.5? So we are interested in less than 0 0.5 probability of losing all tickets. Losing means that every one of those wins either zero or one uh, winning number. All right. So how can I approach this? Now let's go back to the first problem. 
uh, uh, if you remember, I presented two different approaches, considering your ticket as primary, which fixes a certain number of uh, uh, numbers, and then the, the random process is uh, drawing um, the winning numbers from this machine. Or, alternatively, you can draw the winning numbers first, just don't tell it to the guy, so he buys the ticket, and filling the ticket is basically the, the random process, which is completely equivalent to the previous one. So in this case, we will use the second approach, because we are buying more, the more than one tickets. So it's not like two independent things. Um, it's one drawing and n tickets. So it's more convenient to have one drawing first, but kept secret, so it fixes a certain number of winning numbers. So we have six fixed numbers. They are the winners, all right? Now, we are buying n tickets, one after another, filling up randomly with whatever numbers we want, and basically compare what, what what's the uh, r result is and what, what kind of elementary events would constitute the event that none of these is winning anything. All right, so this is easier because this gives us the chance to basically uh, multiply the number of elementary events. And here is why. For one particular, for one particular ticket, well, first of all, let's talk about elementary events in this particular case. Since I'm buying n tickets, and each ticket I fill up with six uh, numbers, so n, n sets of, uh, let's call it strings, of six numbers is an elementary event. So my first ticket, for instance, gives me some numbers. One number, two number, three, four, five, and six. This is my first ticket, my first part of one long elementary event. Then we buy another ticket, and we have another six numbers, etc. And then we have the nth ticket, n, n strings. And each string, each string has six numbers, from, from 1 to, to, to 49 each. Um, order actually is uh, unimportant. But all together, this n strings, where each string contains six numbers, basically chosen from 1 to 49, uh, is one elementary event. Okay? That, that's, that's what my purchasing n tickets and filling them up randomly means. All right? Now, if this is an elementary event, all we have to do is find out the number of elementary event when the, the first ticket is losing and the second ticket is losing and, and the nth ticket is losing, all right? Which means that among these, there are only zero or one common numbers with my six winning. So I have six winning before the drawing was done, right? So in this, I have to have no more than one, so zero or one. And we actually know it's um, number of combinations from six uh, by zero times number of combinations from 43 by six. That's zero number of combinations in one particular string only, plus by one, and that would be this. So either zero winning and all six belong to non chosen among here, or one winning and five belongs to all others, 43. So the sum of these is basically the number of different strings of the length six, uh, which are not really. Uh, having more than one common numbers. But now this also has the same number of losing strings, right? So this is the number of losing strings number one, and this is the number of losing strings number two, which is exactly the same, and losing strings number n. So I have to 
raise this to the nth degree because with each of these, each of these, each of these, etc. These are all different combinations. And to find out the total of uh, n strings uh, with each of them being having you know this particular number of uh, losing strings, I have to multiply these all losing strings with every losing this string, I have every losing this string and every losing that string. So this is the number of elementary events which we are interested in. And obviously the number of all the combinations when uh, we, we, when we uh, have uh, all the different combinations of n strings with six numbers each. Well, it's basically the same thing again. It's this to the nth degree because each string has that many different combinations right it's 6 out of 49 and if with each of these I have each of these with each of these and that's why I multiply them all together so if you will divide this by this you will get the answer to the problem which basically means that you have to have <coughs> one ticket and and raise it to, to the to the power of n. Well, that's basically it. That that's my end of the lottery games. I hope you are all winners, and I'm sure actually you 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 are if you if you understand whatever all these problems are about. I do suggest you to read again the notes to this lecture and try again to recreate the solution. It's written relatively. Um, in, in details in, in the notes for the lecture. So you're welcome to go to unisor.com and review this lecture again. It's very useful. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.